Hello, my name is Jeremy Mayo, and welcome to my new free video training series. A bit about myself, I'm an MFA candidate in lighting design at the University of Cincinnati, as well as a freelance designer, programmer, electrician, systems integrator, and lighting artist. I wanted to start making these videos because I noticed some topics I deal with a lot in lighting that people might be unfamiliar with or might have trouble understanding. As always, these videos are free, though if you like the content, please consider donating via the links on my website. Today, we're going to be talking about connecting ETC Nomad to WYSIWYG, specifically on the same computer. A bit about why you might want to do this. A lot of people might not have access to a physical console or two machines they can network together, and it's really not that difficult at all to set up. When working with a visualizer like WYSIWYG, MA3D Vision, L8, or similar, I prefer to have the software running on the same machine so that I can very easily navigate back and forth between programs if I want to make changes. Before we continue, I highly recommend using two monitors whenever doing a project like this. If you're on a laptop, connecting to an external monitor or using your TV is great in a pinch. We want two screens so that one can be our visualizer and one can be our console. Everything will still work fine with just one monitor, though it makes it much harder to navigate in just about every way. A common misconception is that it's very taxing to run your console and visualizer on the same computer. It's actually really not. For Nomad, ETC only recommends Windows 7, a 2 GHz processor, half a gig of RAM, and a 64 megabyte video card. And if you know anything about computers, that's only a bit more than what's recommended for Google Chrome, so it's really not that bad. That being said, you don't want to be running any visualizer without some good processing power. For this video, we're going to be using a, a desktop with an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, a Ryzen 7 2700X processor, and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Before we begin, let's talk about some assumptions I'll be making when going through this video. Uh, you're going to need access to WYSIWYG, access to Nomad, the Windows operating system, uh, if you know WYSIWYG, you know that it's Windows only anyways. And some networking basics. Uh, this isn't going to be a video explaining how exactly the networking works or what's exactly happening to make the connection between EOS and WYSIWYG work. So we're going to gloss over some networking terms without explaining them. Though if you'd like a video going over networking specifically for use in lighting, uh, leave some feedback and I might make another video. Uh, this all should work fine if you're running Windows uh, on a Mac via Boot Camp or Parallels. And you don't necessarily need an output license for Nomad, though I do recommend it. Uh, you can still control Visualizer just with the offline software, uh, with just a few limitations, but we'll talk about that later. And that's all we need to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our EO software and show file. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my EOS software. Uh, before we go any further, we want to make sure we're in EOS mode. In case you want to be working in Element for some reason, you can change that, but we're going to be in EOS. So uh, we're using version 2.9.1 for this demo. Um, though the settings haven't changed in a very long time um, in EOS networking, uh, maybe in 3.0 we will. I haven't tried the beta yet, but um, all of this should transfer over and be future-proofed for quite a while, so I wouldn't worry about it too much if you're watching this a bit later. So the first thing we're going to do to set up our show file is hop into settings. So in just the general settings window, we're going to want to look at a couple of things. We want to make sure we're opening into the shell, which uh, we just did. Uh, we just want to do that to make sure we can check our network settings whenever we open our project again, make sure everything's all set up, good to go. We want to make sure we're not running in full screen. Uh, that's because if you run the EO software in full screen mode, it's going to make it a lot more difficult to navigate between your visualizer and EOS because EOS will always try to be full screen over top of your software. I have offline editor windows set to 4, that's my personal preference. Uh, you'll see how I have things set up in a minute. Uh, but you can set this to whatever is great for your workflow. And then you also just uh, want to check if you have like a 4K monitor or something with very high resolution, you might just want to check your DPA scaling, uh, DPI scaling, excuse me, just to make sure uh, your text is showing up large enough. Uh, I like about this size, so we're going to move on. 
So next, you're going to want to hop into network settings. So first, we want to make sure our console is online. You can see here status online. That's what we want. If you don't see this as green or online, it means that EOS is not connecting to any network interface. And we're not going to get into troubleshooting that in this video, though um, you'll need to remedy that before going further. So we shouldn't need to change any settings here. We just want to take note of what's happening. So we want to take a look at our IP address and remember what this number is. So a bit about what's going on here. Uh, we're obtaining an IP automatically from the network interface that EOS is using. It's going to default to whatever your computer's default is, which is totally fine uh, in most cases. So right now mine is ethernet. This is gonna be true for most people. And then we don't really need to uh, worry about subnet mask or default gateway. Um, WYSIWYG isn't going to have any conflict with this 99% of the time. So all we really need to worry about here is the IP address. We can write that down or just remember what it is. Then moving down, we want to look at output protocols. So here we have a couple of options. What we're going to be using is SACN. So we want to make sure that SACN is turned on for the network interface that we're using, which on my machine is Ethernet. And that default is checked. That's just going to say that by default EOS is using SACN. You can have multiple things checked uh, for default. These streams can run in parallel, SACN, Artnet, all this stuff. Uh, but it won't actually output unless these boxes are checked. Now these should be your default options, but you want to make sure your priority is 100 and your start address is 1. Very important. And then we can leave all the rest of the settings in here. Uh, you don't want DHCP service enabled uh, just because you don't need any additional IP configuration. Just a static IP is all you need. Or well, I guess that is dynamic, obtaining automatically, but yeah. So we're going to go ahead and accept these options. And then from there, we're good to just go ahead and set up our show file. So we're going to boot into primary. If you don't have an output license, this is going to say offline with viz, and that's totally fine. Now you can see because I had four offline windows selected, uh, this is how it boots, uh, because this is the setup that I like when I'm programming at home. So if you boot into a show file you already have, you're just going to want to start a new show file, uh, unless you're using a show file that you already have to connect to WYSIWYG, but for this example we'll just create a new one. So we have our new show file, and let's put in some fixtures for us to play with. So over in patch, I'm going to give us just two Verilite 4000 spots as channels one and two. So I'll put those in there real quick. And we're going to go with the 16-bit enhanced profile for these. Great. And now I'm just going to patch these for our example at address one slash one sequentially. So you can see now we have two VL4000 spots patched at one slash one and one slash 58. And we are now good to go with a file. So we're going to leave this open. Uh, we can save it real quick. I'll go ahead and put in my archive as wig example. And then we just want to leave this open. You can leave it um, running on your second monitor, wherever you want to put it, but we're going to leave uh, EOS open. We're not going to close it is we need a constant stream of SACN happening on our computer. So now with our file all set up, we're going to go ahead and open WYSIWYG. Now we're using release 42 educational version, um, though that shouldn't affect anything about the process, uh, whichever version you're on. Uh, if you're on an older version or a newer version, CAST has not changed the connection settings in quite a long time, so I imagine this will be relevant for quite a while. And I know this uh, process is the same as far back as release 33 or 34 or so, possibly longer. 
So I'm just going to create a new file. And then we need our file to be the exact same as what we set up in EOS. Now, EOS doesn't really care about anything in here except the fixtures. Uh, so real quick, let's just drop in a pipe. 10 feet long, 20 foot trim, that's totally fine. Plop it anywhere. And let's put in our fixtures. So we had two VL4000s, 4000 4, spots. So we'll go ahead and just put those right on our pipe. Don't care about the fixture notes. One and two. There we go. Now for this example to see what's going on, we're also just going to drop in a riser real quick and a person to look at. Um, default, quick and dirty, totally fine. And I'll just go ahead and drop in a quick person to look at real quick. Let's go with the DJ casual man. Just drop him right here on a riser. Make sure he's actually standing on the riser. Great, now we have our lights. Now we need to patch these the exact same that they are in EOS. And again, this is transferable to whatever your rig is. For our example, it's just these two lights. But if you have a rig of say 20, VL2500s, uh, you just want to make sure your two files line up. So real quick, we're going to hop over and patch these. Now since we're using the educational version, we come pre-populated with four universes of DMX. If you're using a completely fresh file, um, you might have to set these up yourself. But we're just going to hop into DMX A, which is already mapped to our first universe. We're going to go ahead and patch these. So I'm going to take this, put at address 1. Now, you'll notice something. Right now, we're going 1 to 52, uh, which is not the same as what we have in EOS. So it's important to make sure that we're using the same profile. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into Properties for this. And under Fixture Options, we're just going to want to make sure we're using the extended profile and not just the plain 16 bits. So we're going to go ahead and make that change. And you see now we have the correct addresses populated all the way up to our next gap at 58. So I'll make sure both lights are in that profile. And then I will just patch him right here at 58. And there we go, now we are all set up with our lights patched appropriately. Uh, EOS does not care about the other information WYSIWYG might be tracking, such as channel and dimmer, uh, because EOS doesn't actually know that WYSIWYG exists. It's just shooting SACN data out into the network, uh, and WYSIWYG happens to be receiving it. So you can leave this blank uh, if you want, or if you're using WYSIWYG for your data management, you can set up your file however you want. Uh, but it doesn't matter for our purposes. So now that we're all set up here, we're going to hop into live. Give ourselves a nice view where we can see what's happening. We've got our DJ man on the platform. It's all good. So now you're going to want to set up WYSIWYG to receive SACM. So the first thing we need to do is hop into options, application options, and go to additional interfaces. And all we care about in here is the SACN interface. And we want the local address to be the same IP address that we uh, took note of on EOS earlier. So I have a couple options populated already, uh, loopback adapter, things that MA might use. And we have an option for our the same IP that EOS is using. So we're going to select that and hit OK. And then we need to add an SACN device to WYSIWYG. You can see right here we have no connected devices, so we're going to add an SACN device. We're going to go to Managers, Device Manager, and then we're going to hit New. Now SACN is a network device, so we're just going to go under Networks. Again, that's under Networks. We're going to go to All, SACN, and you can just go ahead and insert that. 
we need to set this up real quick. We're going to go to properties and you can see we have all sorts of outputs and right now they're not mapped to any universes. So real quick, we're going to populate these with our four DMX universes that are available in the educational edition. Great. One through four, all good to go. You can also auto assign these. And we're just going to hit close. You don't need to fill in any of this other information. Now you can see we're not connected and connect on load. Uh, if you want to connect to SACN whenever you boot the file, you can just check that box and that'll happen. And now we still have EOS running. We're just going to hit connect. And then WYSIWYG is connected to ACN. We're all good to go. Close that. Now, if we hop back into EOS, I'll just take our first window here, resized a bit. Now, if you're using two monitors, this would still just be open on your second monitor, remember? Now, I'll just take one at full. And there's our light. It's all patched correctly, and we have control of it. So we have EOS running on the same machine as WYSIWYG, and we're able to fully control our rig. You can see we have pan tilt control and everything should be good to go. Now again, this is transferable to whatever your rig might be. It's important to remember also that you don't necessarily need to do this uh, at all in the order that I did it. You can come with a EOS file fully patched, fully programmed, and then just build your rig in WIG. Uh, and then make sure it's all patched and wig and then do the connection. Uh, you just need to make sure you have two complete files ready to go before you start bridging them. Uh, you could have your rig completely flushed out in WYSIWYG, all patched in WYSIWYG, and then you can just build an EOS show file and then link it. Uh, whatever order works for you and your workflow. Uh, just the same principles apply. And that is all we need to do. So if we close EOS, this is going to latch, which is fine. Uh, you should just be able to boot EOS back up and take control again. And thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out via the contact information on my website, and I hope this was helpful.